Hi friends, welcome back. And we're gonna finish some more of the one and only Ivan. So last time when we left off, Ivan finally decided that he was finished with this painting and he wanted to show it to Julia. So he pushed all the pieces through the crack in his cage and Julia is slowly figuring out that what Ivan drew was a picture of Ruby in a zoo with a special word with it too. The word was home. So let's see what happens next. Julia watches me. She chews on her thumbnail. I see the question in her eyes. She turns back to the paintings and stares at them, looking, truly looking. A slow smile dawns on Julia's face. Dad, she says, I have an idea, a big idea. Julia races around the edge of my painting, her arms wide. Billboard big. I'm not following you. I think this is meant to be up on the billboard. That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arms over his chest. What Ivan wants, he repeats slowly. And you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I'm an artist and he's an artist. Uh-huh, says George. Julia clasps her hands together. Come on, Dad, I'm begging you. George shakes his head. No, I'm not doing that. No billboard, no way. I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark out, but the billboard is lit. Mackle fire me, Jules. Julia considers. Oh, but think of the publicity, Dad. Everybody would know about Ruby. You want me to put up a sign that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home on it in giant letters? George gestures toward my pictures. A sign, incidentally, that just happens to have been made by a gorilla? Exactly. And you want me to do this without Mac's permission, George asks. Exactly. No, George says. No way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, careful not to step on any of my paintings. She picks up Mac's claw stick. She walks back and hands it to her father. George runs a finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want to help her? But how would it help, Jules? Even if lots of people see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anything's going to change. Not exactly sure yet. Julia shakes her head. Maybe people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. Maybe they'll want to help too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. She waves her trunk. It's a matter of principle, Dad. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. L-E. George corrects. Dad, Julia says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? George looks at me, at Ruby, at Julia. He drops the claw stick. The latter, he says quietly, is in the storage locker. I watch Max's car slammed to a halt in a parking lot the next morning. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. You know, a mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too. 
especially when he is throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking the cotton candy machine. Mac is kicking a trash can across the food court when the phone rings. He answers it, red-faced and sweating. What the? he demands. He glares at me. I don't know what you're... He starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia who? He asks. Oh, sure, George's kid. She's the one who called you? More talking. With, with the phone to his ear, Mac comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He paints, sure. We've been selling his art for quite a while now. There is another long pause. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It was my idea. Mac nods. A smile starts at the corners of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to see him in action? Come on down, have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us. We're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pictures. It's, it's a, you know, what, what do you call it? It's a work in process. When the call is done, Mac shakes his head. Impossible, he says. An hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He is from the local paper, the one Julia called. How about you take one of me with the elephant, Mac suggests. His, he drapes his arm around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera clicks. Perfect, the man says. Perfect, Mac agrees. And here's a, what the picture looks like. I'm going to hold it right up there. How do you think Ruby looks? What do you think she's feeling? What do you think? Let's keep going. A photo of my billboard is in the newspaper. Mac tapes the story onto my window. Each day, more curious people arrive. They park in front of the billboard. They point and shake their heads. They take photos. Then they come into the mall and buy my paintings. While visitors watch, I dip my hands in fresh buckets of paint. I make pictures for the gift shop and pictures to add to the billboard. Trees with birds, a newborn elephant with glittering black eyes, a squirrel, a bluebird, a worm. I even paint Bob so he can be on the billboard too. I can tell he likes the picture, although he says I didn't quite capture his distinguished nose. Every afternoon, Mac and George add my new pictures to the billboard. People slow their cars while they work. Drivers honk and wave. My gift shop pictures now cost $65 with the frame. I have new names. People call me the ape artist, the primate Picasso. I have visitors from morning till night, and so does Ruby. But nothing has changed for her. Every day at two, four, and seven, Ruby plods through the sawdust with Snickers on her back. And every night she has bad dreams. Bob, I say after I've soothed Ruby to sleep with a story. My idea isn't working. Bob opens one eye. Be patient. I'm tired of being patient, I say. This evening, a man and woman come to interview Mac and also George and Julia. The man has a large and heavy camera perched on his shoulder. He films me as I make my pictures. He films Ruby in her cage, with her foot roped to the bolt in the floor. Mind if I take a look around? he asks. 
Mac waves his hand. Be my guest. Now, while Mac and the woman talk, the cam cameraman walks through the mall. He pans his camera right and left, up and down. When his eyes fall on the claw stick, he stops. He trains his camera on the gleaming blade. Then he moves on. Mac turns on the TV. We are on the early news at five o'clock. Bob says, don't let it go to my head. There we all are, Mac, Ruby, and me. George and Julia, the billboard, the mall, the ring, and the claw stick. In the morning, several people gather in the parking lot. They're carrying signs on sticks. The signs have words and pictures on them. One has a drawing of a gorilla cradling a baby elephant. Oh, I wish I could read. Now, more people with signs came today. They want Ruby to be free. Some of them even want Mac to shut down the mall. And here's a picture of the signs. There. I think you can read them. Let's see what happens next. In the evening, George and Mac talk about them. Mac says they're protesting the wrong guy. He says they're going to ruin everything. He says, thanks for nothing, George. Mac stomps off. George, holding his mop, watches him leave. He rubs his eyes. Oh, he looks worried. Dad? Julia says, looking up from her homework. You know what my favorite sign was? Hmm? George asks, which one? The one that said, elephants are people too. George gives her a tired smile. He goes back to work. His mop moves across the empty food court like a giant brush, painting a picture that no one will ever see. And let's keep going a little bit more, just a little bit. A tall man with a clipboard and pencil comes to visit. He says he is here to inspect the property. He doesn't say much more, but he makes many check marks on his paper. He looks at my floor. Check. He examines Ruby's hay. Check. He eyes our water bowls. Check. Mac watches him, scowling. Bob is outside, hiding near the dumpster. He does not want to be a check mark. And that is where we will stop for this time. Thanks so much for listening, friends. We'll find out what happens with those protesters next time. <laughs>